I am your resume reader, Crowsong. And today I will be reading to you from The Masquerade by Daughter of Apollo 2019. Now on to chapter three, The Rules. Since everyone was now present, we turned to our father, waiting for him to lay out some guidelines for what we were and were not allowed to do. Britton cleared his throat. Tonight, since it's a special occasion, I've decided to let you have mostly free reign over what you do. We all looked at each other in excitement. Our father never lets us choose what we could do. There had always been strict rules, and those rules had only gotten stricter after what happened two years ago. Clearly, father saw the excitement on our faces and repeated, You can mostly have free reign. You are not allowed to purposefully prank someone into getting lost. That was a little game we played sometimes, to see how lost we could get our guests in the castle. Obviously, that game was not going to happen tonight. You are not to bring your pets into the ballroom. Pointed look at Australia. You are not allowed to bring anyone away from the ballroom unless you have specific permission from me or your mother. Glance at Canada. We all nodded. The rules made sense so far. And lastly, Father finished, remember that all of you are not of age yet, therefore are not allowed to consume any alcoholic beverages. Even without looking, I felt my father's gaze bore into me. I knew better than to drink. I remembered what happened last time. The moment seemed to last for an eternity, and right as I felt my limits being pushed, I heard my father say, So long as you follow these rules, you can do whatever you please. I breathed a sigh of relief. Both Ozzy and Kiwi looked at me quizzically, but I ignored them. I was about to ask my father why he was lifting all the restrictions now, when it seemed like he would tighten them even more, but then I caught his eye, and I saw something there that I hadn't seen in a long time. Trust. Britain was trusting me to make the right decision, and I wasn't about to let him down. Muy amor, shouldn't we be preparing? Mother asked father. La famille is going to be arriving soon, no? The French roughly translates to my love and the family. Father nodded solemnly, as if he was dreading the idea of seeing family, which he probably was. He was never a fan of big family reunions. The first to arrive were my uncles on my father's side, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, and England. Even though my father was the youngest out of all of them, you probably wouldn't be able to tell just by looking at them. Britain was definitely the most responsible member of the family, and everyone knew it. England came in close second, but even he let my father take the lead. Oi, Britain, it's been a while since you've thrown a party, Scotland exclaimed, throwing his arm around his younger brother. I'm not really one for large-scale gatherings, you know, father grumbled, pushing Scotland's arm off of him. Well, as so long as you've got yourself some of the good stuff. We'll all be happy, right? Ireland grinned, and Britain shivered. I watched as Father got pulled away by his brothers, and I knew we wouldn't see him for at least a couple hours. This happened every time we had invited family over for a party. We weren't sure what they did, and Father refused to talk about it. But we had some suspicions that it involved good old family bonding over a beer keg. Next to arrive was Mother's cousin Spain and his kids Mexico, Chile, Argentina, and Peru, along with Portugal and his kid, Brazil. Brazil almost immediately ran off together towards Aussie's room, and I couldn't help but smile over remembering how they'd bonded over Australia's pets a few years back and had remained good friends to this day. I walked over to Mexico. She was about my age, and we were pretty good friends even if we didn't see each other that often. Hola, America. She smiled. 
Hello, Mexico. It's been a while. I grinned back. Mexico gave me a hug, and the two of us walked while everyone else just hung out for a little. We teased Canada and Peru about how they looked so similar that they could be brothers, as we always did when we were together. It was a thing. But it still was weird how similar Canada and Peru looked. After a few minutes of us just hanging out, France, Spain, and Portugal all came over to us to tell us that we had to get ready. Vale, niños. Tenemos que prepararnos ahora. A los invitados estarán aquí pronto. Spain said to all his kids. And they all nodded. The Spanish roughly translates to, Okay, kids. We have to prepare now. The guests will be arriving soon. Canada, New Zealand, and I just looked at him in confusion. Luckily, Mexico seemed to notice our confusion and quickly translated. He says that people are going to be here soon, and so we have to get ready. I smiled at Mexico, and she smiled back before turning back to her father. Vale, papa. She looked around a little before asking, Tengo se saquer algo de muy mi poloso. Me lo puedo dar? Spanish roughly translates to, Okay, dad. I have something in my bag. Can I go get it? Si, sí, pero rápido. Spain nodded, and Mexico quickly headed to the other room. Miss Chiris, can you go get Australia and Brazil? Mother asked. New Zealand, Canada, and I all shared a glance. And without saying a word, New Zealand sighed. Fine, I'll go get him. Thanks, Kiwi. I shot a grateful look at my little brother, who just rolled his eyes. And don't forget your masks. Everyone should have them on when the guests arrive. France called as we walked away. I don't get why you didn't want to get Aussie, New Zealand commented. We just gave him a look. Just because most of its pets are deadly doesn't mean... He started, but cut himself off mid-sentence. Never mind, I'm starting to see the issue now. He quickly excused himself, heading off to grab Australia and Brazil, and we continued walking. We walked in silence for a little before Canada broke it. Let me guess, you left your mask in my room. No, why in the world would you think I did that? I said sarcastically, in such a way that immediately showed that it was true. Canada chuckled. Yep, classic me. We walked a little more before Canada broke the silence again. Hey, Amay, are you actually going to try and find a lady at this ball? He looked at the ground awkwardly. I sighed. I don't know. I guess it depends. I gave my brother a wonky smile. Quickly, I ducked into my brother's room to grab a mask. But before I left, I caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror. I stared for a moment before I made a decision. I was going to try at this ball. I was going to try and make my father happy. And that's the end of this chapter. I hope you enjoyed. Anyway, I'd like to invite you to join the Discord, which is linked down in the description below. That being said, I hope you have a nice rest of your day, night, or whatever it is for you. Just enjoy your time. And I will see you tomorrow.